Let's kick off with Aspen. Having just sat through that interview with Stephen Saad, the company seems set for greater things. But looking at the share price performance, this was the best performing stock on the top 40 over 2009 period, up 117 percent. In the ramp up to these results, we rallied about 14 percent. Today, closing two thirds of a percent lower at 76 Rand 52. Has the share got more legs? We had a pretty demanding PE of around 15. Um, I guess, yeah, if we look at um, Aspen, I, I guess the two key things, obviously the results, uh, which were very good. Uh, but I think the market is also beginning to anticipate whether or not they will get an SEP price increase. Uh, last year that was announced in December, implemented about February. Uh, the market now is expecting for that SEP increase to be uh, perhaps announced now in March. Uh, that will give them a bit more pricing power going forward. So uh, does it have a, a lot more legs? We don't necessarily think so. We think uh, the SEP price increase could be very low coming out from uh, the pricing department this year. And you, got you're obviously referring to the single, so, single exit you know, if pricing. If your volumes are growing at 10 and you're getting a 13% price increase, that has a, a major driver to uh, the top line. And as, as Stephen mentioned, their, their pharma business showed top line growth of around 30. Uh, so the risk I uh, the way we see it is that the SEP price increase could be low, sort of single digits between 0 and 5%, uh, and then you may get the RAND weakening, and then you will see sort of the pricing power uh, of these farmers fade a little. And like you said, uh, the stock's not necessarily that cheap on sort of 15 times earnings. Well, let's look at the international growth opportunity, because if you, if you break up their revenue to the half, we had 2.5 billion rand coming from South Africa, and we had 1.7 billion rand coming from international operations. Now, Stephen clearly looking for growth in that Latin American opportunity, and also in Sub-Saharan Africa, which Sub-Saharan Sub Africa was under pressure in this half, given uh, the fact that they had problems with their imports into or their exports into that territory rather. Correct. I think what sort of surprised us on the upside last year and probably why the stock was such a good performer generally uh, was a lot of the transactions that they've done with GSK uh, have added a lot more to the top line and the bottom line than uh, at least we were expecting and particularly I think the market was expecting. So you, like you said they have legs now in, uh, in Africa through Shelley's as well as the sort of new GSK collaboration. Um, and presumably, you know, Latin America with Brazil can't necessarily get worse. So they're all looking for a, for a turnaround in, in that business as well. Would you want exposure to pharmaceuticals at all at the moment? Would you prefer an entry point like an Adcock Ingram? Um, both of those stocks are, like I said, looking a bit toppish at the moment. And we are concerned about the, the SEP price increase. Uh, so at this stage, we would sort of be waiting for a bit more clarity. Uh, we recently sold out of some of our pharma, pharma exposure, so uh, at these levels we'd be waiting for much better entry points into, into the pharma sector. And you must have done well uh, in that pharma exposure to date. South Africa's biggest property and casualty insurer Suntum released a 55% increase in 2009 headline earnings per share, largely driven by the rally that we saw in the market from the March 2009 lows. Market JSC all share was up, what, some 29% over that period. So they were impacted positively by that uh, equity momentum. Correct. They take the increase or decrease uh, in, the, in their shareholder portfolio through the income statement. So last year, sort of roughly broad numbers, they lost about 500 million because the markets were down. Uh, in 2009, markets rallied and they got about a 500 million kicker to the earnings. So that's about a billion rand swing uh, to the earnings. Uh, and that's why your headline earnings was up 55%. Uh, if we look at the results relative to our expectations, they did about 250 million uh, better than expected at the profit before tax line. Uh, 50 million of that was because markets uh, were slightly better than we had expected. Uh, but the second half, the underwriting surplus, their, so, their core uh, insurance business, did about 200 million better than expected. So there was also quite a nice turnaround in sort of the core uh, insurance business. Uh, but again, a stock that, that looks a bit toppish. Uh, NAV per share of the stock is about 42, 42 and 50. Uh, it's trading about two and a half times book. So there's quite a lot priced into, into Suntum at, at these levels as well. Uh, so we would think that there's probably better value in some of the life insurers as opposed to uh, the short-term insurers. Would you, if you were holding Suntum, if you take that theory into account, would you sell out of it and switch into potentially one of the life insurers? Uh, like I said, I think the, the life insurers are offering sort of considerably more value. Uh, if you look at the likes of a Metropolitan, a Liberty and Old Mutual, 
Uh, these are stocks trading at about 0.7 to anywhere between 0.7 and 0.85 times embedded value. Uh, and you've got Suntum at sort of 2.5 times NAV. Uh, there's quite a big disconnect there, I would say, almost at a, an historical high between those, two, between those two sectors. Obviously, there's not much short-term insurance exposure uh, left on the market. The, the, the liquidity in Zurich financial is very weak. Mutual and Federal was delisted last month, so perhaps there's a bit of a scarcity premium built into the, uh, into the Suntum share price. Let's look at ArcelorMittal, Kumba Iron Ore. We know that ArcelorMittal was suspended from trade on the JSE All Share on Friday. It resumed trade today. It's down at the bottom of the top 40, almost 23% lower. What are your thoughts on the, the situation that is unfolding at the moment? Um, yeah, there's still quite a lot up in the air. I mean, the stock did, like you say, start trading again. It lost about 25 Rand. Um, the sort of estimates the market was talking about is that in a worst case scenario were Arcelor to lose uh, this arbitration hearing that they seem to now be going into with, with Kio, uh, with Kumba, um, that they could effectively lose 50, 50 Rand of their value. So at the moment the market's sort of taking almost a 50-50 chance uh, that these uh, negotiations uh, will, will sort of turn out in, in Arcelor's, in Arcelor's favour. It sounds uh, like gambling. If you, if you, and if I think it sounds like gambling if you're sitting with a 50-50 chance. How do you digest that as an investment analyst? Uh, look, we are, I guess, fortunate not to be in the position that we hold Arcelor uh, at this stage. Um, so I guess our view would be we would, look at, we would be looking at to see what sort of the worst downside situation would be, which would be, like I said, a 50 Rand uh, share price loss and then and looking at sort of uh, what we thought was a, a reasonable probability. Uh, for our clients' money to, to sort of invest in, in Arcelor. But like you say, it's a binary outcome, which then does start to resemble gambling. So that's not something that we as a house would, would necessarily like to, uh, to put our clients' money into. When do you think we'll see resolution on, uh, and get some detail on actually what is happening? I, uh, the favorable thing is that both companies have uh, committed to, to sort of trying to expedite this process as, as quickly as possible. So. Again, difficult to know, but I don't necessarily think that this is something that they would want um, sort of hanging over their, their respective sort of counters for more than sort of two to three months. Johnny, and they have also suggested an interim uh, proposal as well. Uh, we haven't seen details of that, but it does look like Kumba has, has put forward a, an interim proposal to, to Arcelor, uh, which Arcelor is in the process of considering as well. Your view on the JSE all share on equities at this stage, are we still looking topish across the board? Are you preparing perhaps for that double dip recession that does provide us with much banter on the news desks at the moment? So obviously it would be a, a travesty for the South African economy if we were to see a double dip recession on the global front. But where do you lie in the argument in terms of valuations, where we headed and what's going to drive uh, valuations in the future? We're still concerned with the level of both global and sort of local equity markets and therefore sort of defensively positioned both uh, across the asset allocation spectrum as, as well as within equities. Uh, we still think there's a couple of storm clouds out there. Uh, most recently have been sort of increasing uh, government deficits uh, and Greece is obviously the one that, that's on the radar at the moment. But there are other, company, other countries as well which have very sort of large debt to, debt to GDP ratios uh, which we'll be, we, that we'll be watching uh, as well.